What is going on everyone? I am Bob Mac, and today on Crisis in the Toyverse, we're going to be looking at the Mattel DC Multiverse All-Star Batman Harvey Dent slash Two-Face. Now this guy, when you look at him out of the packaging, he definitely looks cool. He doesn't look bad as a display piece. When I first saw this figure, I was kind of on the fence in terms of, do I really want this version of Harvey Dent? But I've done some toy photography pictures with it. I actually say it's not horrible. It's not great, but it's not horrible either. So let's just go in and let's look at the figure a little closely, shall we? So the head sculpt looks very nice. It definitely has that influence from the comic book workings of Scott Snyder and uh, Greg Capullo. Uh, you could definitely see that with the human side of the face and definitely with the burnt side of the face. It definitely looks cool. Uh, there is no application applied to the neck area, which is a bit disappointing. I mean, they just painted it, no detail or anything. That's a bit of a bummer, but the suit looks nice. This is definitely a reused piece. I think it's a reuse of that Joker figure from a little bit ago, but I could be wrong on that. Um, black shirt, black pants, no paint on the belt or anything. Uh, the shoes have a different tone to it to the rest of the body, but... You know, it is what we've come to expect from Mattel. Like I said, though, I'm trying to go about this in an open mind. But, you know, it definitely doesn't look horrible. Now let's talk articulation. In terms of the head, he can't really look up or down. It definitely would have been nice for him to be able to look down so he could look at the coin or look up in case you wanted to make it look like he was flipping the coin. But that's a minor gripe. So... The head can't spin around, like I said, and that's pretty much... You get a little bit of side to side, but nothing that's super amazing. Now, in terms of the arms, the arms go out tremendously well. They go all the way out like that, all the way down, spin all the way around. We got a bicep cut right here, a single bend in the elbow, and it's on this ball-like plug, if you will. And you can get the arm, hand to go up and down and spin all the way around and even go side to side. But it will not hold in that position, just so you guys know. Now, he does have an ab crunch. It sort of goes down and it sort of goes back. Nothing too crazy. This guy is not going to be able to limbo. He does have a waist cut as well. In terms of the legs, he can get into that kung fu action there, a la John claude Van Damme. Uh, he can kick forward that much. He can go back ever so slightly. He does have a thigh cut right here. A uh, single bend at the knee, and then the foot sort of hinges up and hinges back, but because of the suit, it is hindered a little bit. You get side to side, but it doesn't hold in place. And yes, he does have peg holes at the bottom of his feet. So all in all, like I said, it's articulation we've seen before. It's nothing that's going to wow or amaze you, but you can actually get him into some decent poses. So all in all, it's not the end of the world now let's stop the video here and talk accessories all right guys let's go ahead and talk about the accessories let's first start off with the clay face build the figure obviously right here we have the front part of the torso and then we have the back part as you can see you have some pegs here and you just plug it in and snap it in and voila we got a torso completed now once clay face is built i'll be talking about that a lot more in depth but in terms of the rest of the accessories that I want to focus in, we get two sets of left hands, or I guess, a, well, two different left hands, and uh, two pistols. Now, the pistols are sculpted okay, I guess. They're a little cartoony. But the weird thing is the trigger doesn't connect all the way. Now, this is definitely a weird gun, to say the least. But he, Two-Face, him being Two-Face, pronouns, pal. Uh, he can hold the gun with, uh, no problem, but it just looks kind of weird and awkward. However, the coins look very okay. What you're going to want to do is unplug the hand, and then for our first hand, we get the scarred side, which plugs in like so. And then we have the other hand here, which you can also plug in, which is the good coin. Um, these work very well, and it is pretty cool. Would have been nice to have, like, the coin spinning up in the air, but the fact that Mattel even did this is impressive enough in my eyes. So you get two pistols, two hands, and a whole lot of bad guy here with Clayface. Let's go ahead and do a size comparison and wrap this up. 
All right, gang, here we are at the size comparison. In the middle, of course, we have our all-star Two-Face. On the other side, we have the movie masters, Harvey Dent. And just for giggles, we have the Ares Build-A-Figure from the Wonder Woman wave. Obviously, the Build-A-Figure and the all-star Two-Face will fit in a lot better because the movie masters line is a bit shorter, but you can make it work if you chose to. Um, Overall thoughts, I mean... Mattel's definitely giving us an effort. It's the same effort I gave to studying for a test in college uh, when I knew that the exam was the next day. And by that, I mean studying the night before. Hopefully, they figure out all the kinks going forward to continue to make this line better and be something that DC toy collectors really want to do at a retail level. But really, just being honest with you, the, the Two-Face isn't bad. Actually... All things considered, it definitely works. He's not a dynamically poseable character to begin with. He's not doing super crazy stuff. He's a guy in a suit flipping a coin at the end of the day. And, you know, it definitely works. But that's just my opinion. So, guys, bottom line is, if you want to build the Clayface figure, you're going to want to pick him up. But if you want to not pick him up, then obviously don't. I think he's actually not too bad, and I'm actually happy that I did pick him up. But with that being said, guys, that's going to pretty much do it for today's video. I want to thank you for taking the time to say thank you and, you know, leaving a like or a comment or let me know how much you hate everything. Uh, I appreciate it one way or another because you're taking time out of your day to see what I'm doing here. Um, I got a ton of links in the description below. By now, you already know how that goes. Go check out extreme-sets.com. They got some amazing new stuff out. You will definitely want to see what that is and how it could help out your toy photography or display purposes. Also, on the interwebs, throw it in your Google machine. Head over to UndercoverCapes.com for all things geekery in the podcast verse. And if that wasn't enough for you, on Instagram, go throw a follow at Toy Lover Crew and engage in the toy conversations. And lastly, head over to BigBadToyStore.com for all things toys and collectibles. With that being said, guys, thank you so much. Slideshow at the end. And until next time, great googly moogly.